Hello everybody, Kelly Rice here, but I write under my pen name, K.M. Rice, and welcome to my author vlog. Today, I want to remind you that my upcoming book is being released on May 18th. It is the first book in my Afterworld series. If you're curious, you can read more about it on the website, afterworldbooks.com, or just follow me on my social media where I'm going to be talking up a storm about it. Um, the book one is titled Ophelia after the main character. I'm excited and terrified in equal parts to um, be getting this book out there and my hair will not stay behind my ear. Um, that's kind of annoying. So with that out of the way, I would like to talk today about a subject that um, was prompted by a question from a vlog viewer but not necessarily posed but it's something that's been kind of kicking around in my mind for a while. So, a while back I did an episode on storytelling stamina, and in that my main point was discussing, for lack of a better term, self-care while writing. In particular, while writing emotionally distressing scenes. And just being soft with yourself and, and reminding yourself that you are psychologically inhabiting the, the minds and the worlds of these characters, and that as such, you are um, you're going vicariously going through their experiences. And if you're writing stuff that's upsetting, it's going to be taxing on you. Um, so my advice, of course, was to just be aware of that. And if you're going to plow through it, you can plow through it, but be aware that it may have an effect on you, and that effect may bleed into the people in your life. You might find yourself find yourself short tempered or um, sad or maybe you need to write in smaller increments because it's just it takes so much out of you that sort of thing so the flip side of that were people when I put it that up several people commented saying like I get basically I get what you're saying but I also find that it helps me it helps me exercise my own demons to write some of this dark stuff and that made me start reflecting on writing as a form of catharsis and for those of you who don't know what catharsis is, look, look it up. I'm not going to be able to give you a dictionary.com definition, but it's basically the process of vicariously going through an experience to expunge yourself of negativity, to um, maybe drive yourself to the depths of despair so that you can experience the, the happy flip side. You know, we do it when we watch Titanic. We do it when we watch movies that we know are going to be tearjerkers, when we read books that we know are going to be upsetting, because when you go into the darkness you appreciate the light all the better. Maybe some of you have found Darkling or The Watcher to be cathartic. It'd be really interesting to find that out. You could, you could leave a comment below. Um, so, <sighs> sorry this is kind of a heavy one. With that said, I wanted to, yeah, talk about, in my experience, things that I have written that I know ultimately have been cathartic in some way, and to let you know that that is not only okay, but that you can write for cathartic or therapeutic reasons without it even being something that has to pertain to your current project or something that you are even ever going to show anyone. Sometimes I have found, okay, so as, as you guys, if you follow this vlog, you know that I started writing, okay, when I first could put crayon to paper, which was kindergarten, um, but seriously writing when I was a teenager, I started with fan fiction. A lot of my stories were very angsty, um, not, you know, not atypical of a teenager. But I realize now, as an adult looking back, a lot of that was self-exploration. So I would take a character I loved, say, for example, Sirius Black, and this wasn't just teenagerhood, this would be going on to my early 20s, and it's imp an impulse that I um, still sometimes find myself having. Um, I was unconsciously using writing as a form of therapy. If there was some darkness or some hurt in me or my life, I would naturally gravitate towards a character who I related to, and I would sort of inflict that emotional disturbance onto them, 
and have them go through the process. I think that's, you know, there's a category of fan fiction called hurt comfort, and, and the whole point of reading it is for that catharsis, is, is you see something, you know, someone's going through some emotional pain or physical pain or whatever, but then there's the, you know, the, the wonderful, the healing side of, but everything's okay, and it is kind of life-affirming and comforting to you as a reader to be reminded that, yes, these bad things happen, but there are people who love you and, and there is love in the world even if you're not in a space where you're feeling that love in your personal life to remember that there are people out there who love you and to experience that vicariously through characters can be a very therapeutic and empowering thing. So I, I find that, um, you know, I should have gone logged back into my account and looked at all the stories that I've put up over the years but I know just off the top of my head that a lot of what I was writing was me trying to work out some of my demons, for lack of a better word. Things that troubled me, and maybe I wouldn't get to the crux of the problem, maybe I wasn't even then brave at, when I was an, an, an anonymous fanfiction writer, which I'm kind of not anymore. I've shared my stories on my social media so people know, people know that I write under the pseudonym Blackhawk on fanfiction.net. Um, but it was, it was a way, maybe I'm dancing, I was dancing around a problem. Um, I'm not, I'm not a very introspective person in terms of being enlightened as to myself. It's something that I've been aware of through all of my adulthood. I would, I'll, I'll have friends who are like, I did a lot of soul searching, this and that, and like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I know that I, I can be a very deep person and a very sensitive person. However, when it comes to knowledge of the self, the best way that I can ever gain that is putting myself in new situations, having new experiences, meeting new people, and just seeing how I react and what I think and if my um, perceptions change. When I, I'm confronted with a different reality, that's when my reaction will be the true test of what do I believe. So. That's how I find that I grow as a person, and so I actively seek that. And as a writer, I think that goes hand in hand because we are telling stories where we are every single character in the story, including the villain. So that is a way to vicariously experience things that we may never experience in our actual lives and test it out psychologically. I know that um, while writing Afterworld, I was exhausted and literally had physical headaches from some of the characters, but after I finished writing these four books, I felt like, well, I'm done now. I've kind of lived all that I can live, and um, maybe I should have a kid or something. I don't know. I just I felt like I had sort of I had had these, you know, these massive life experiences that I really hadn't had, but lived through them, through my characters, and they were benefiting me. In that way, all forms of storytelling and writing are therapeutic because it is all an examination of the self, and like I said, including the villains. So you are going inwards as you are bringing the words outwards. If that makes sense. And that's a fascinating aspect of the craft to me. Something that I think people don't touch on heavily enough. That's why I in particular wanted to put out that vlog talking about, you know, watching yourself. Check in with yourself as you're writing disturbing scenes. Um, we tend to look at the creative process as something mystical and intangible, and in a lot of ways it is. It is to me. I can't I can't always put it into words for you. That's why I love Percy Shelley's essay, A Defense of Poetry. I've recommended it before, I'm recommending it again. If you want to read something that will blow your mind, read that. Um, that said, that doesn't mean that we can't identify aspects of the creative process, and I'm not just talking about writing, I'm talking about composing, I'm talking about photography, I'm talking about painting, all forms of creativity that take a part of your soul, that take a part of that glimmering interior, that unmoved mover, Plato reference, and put it out there into the world. 
that's a risk in itself. You're making yourself incredibly vulnerable even if nobody knows. Even if nobody knows that that painting or that that song or that that part of the story is something sacred to you. It is still taxing to do that. So I think it's important we acknowledge that and especially as creatives that we acknowledge not only the sacred aspect of putting a piece of our ethereal energy out there, but also the, the courage it takes and the fact that the more often you do it, the easier it will become, the, the easier it will be to take criticism, the easier it will be to sort of, you know, build that thicker skin. And the deeper you will be able to go in your own psychological journey as a storyteller and as a creator. Because once you take that first risk, and maybe you fail, and it hurts, but you realize, I handled that, and I could handle it again if I had to. I'm a lot stronger than I thought I was. And you do it again and again. And of course, there are going to be times too when you're greatly rewarded for taking that risk. I feel like sometimes when I'm doing these episodes and I talk about something like this, that to me is very personal, other people will come along and they'll leave a comment saying, this really helped me, or I didn't realize that I was going through this until you put it into words. Because like I said, so much of this stuff about the creative process, we just don't, we don't voice, you know, it is so much by instinct and by intuition. But if we can help each other along the way, why not? So that's, you know, that's my main reason for doing this, for doing this vlog, is to help other people along the way. I'm not an authority on this. I'm not um, the most learned person in the world or an expert. I'm not even a best-selling author. However, I have been on this earth for an okay amount of time. I'm not, like I said, I'm not the wisest person or whatever. I, I've been alive enough and I've been doing this enough and I've been thinking about it enough that I, I hope that I have something to share and that's why I, I want to share with other people and give back. And I get, you know, it's not completely altruistic. I get back from you as well. Um, so, I don't know, it's just something that's been on my mind lately. So in the same, the, I guess the flip side of exposing yourself and putting you're, you know, putting these vulnerabilities out there in an artistic way is the fact that you can sometimes expel parts of your being that you don't want anymore or, or problems that you're trying to psychologically work out onto the page. Um, I've noticed a recurring pattern in my work that I'm not ready to get into right now, but after you guys have read enough of my work, you might be able to figure it out. Of, of a, a, a problem that I realized, I didn't realize until after I've written, you know, X amount of books, that I'm like, well, that keeps happening. What am I looking at? What am I, what am I dancing around here? What is it in, inside of me? And maybe, you know what, maybe it won't be, maybe you could read everything I've ever written, and you'd be like, I have no idea what you're talking about, Kelly. And that's because it's a personal thing for me that sticks out like a red flag. You know, it's like when you have acne. I'm covering it up with makeup right now. But when you have acne, you feel like all anyone sees is, is the blemishes. Most people do not notice them at all. Or when you get a new pair of glasses or you have braces or whatever. Most people will not even notice that. But to you, you feel like that's all anyone's looking at. So I just, as I was speaking, I was realizing... You very well could read everything I've ever written and not know what I'm talking about, and that's why I'm not going to pontificate exactly what I was talking about. Um, because it is something that is probably just an insecurity on my part that I see in my writing, because after self-reflection I realized this is something that I was probably trying to work out through fiction. Um, so that does happen. That does happen, and you will probably start to notice patterns. Um, in your own writing. Let them help you, you know, use it as a form of self-reflection. It could be a story that you thought was completely made up and fantastical and had no basis in reality, and then you realize sometimes those are the stories that are more real than anything set in the here and now. And um, going back to what I was saying in the beginning, I think that um, using something like fan fiction as a forum to express these darker parts of yourself or these, they don't have to be dark, you know, I have, I have a problem with 
myself calling um, wounds dark because they're not and that's kind of that's painting it in a light of as if it's something icky and that doesn't belong and you you know you, like I said you have to expel it you have to put it on the page the language I'm using right now doesn't sit well with me because the point is to shed light the point is to heal and to grow and to process to um, assimilate an experience into your being or to look at it and reframe it or to accept it and move on and if you can do that through your writing more power to you going back to the fan fiction example I think that that's particularly therapeutic and why a lot of people write these angsty stories is because you know it's going to be read and you can have it read anonymously so you will be getting feedback from people feeling sympathy for the character and that might in turn actually be sympathy for you or what you're going through and um, provide some sort of release for you. That said, it doesn't all have to be a public thing. It doesn't have to be something that's shared. If you find that writing your feelings helps you feel better, whether that's journaling or just writing. I, one time I, I, I think I wrote just this whole several pages of dialogue um, I didn't know who was speaking. It was just two people and they were speaking and that really helped me to write that out. Um, you can write a paragraph, you can write a poem, you can write anything that feels right to you in the moment and that helps you in the moment. And you never know, you might come back to it later and get a story out of it. So my point, I guess, is if it feels right to you and it helps you do it and you'll be shocked I think you will be shocked at that once you put pen to paper, which by the way, I tend to, if I'm doing something for coming from a place like this, I would hand write it. I would hand write it first. It's just more personal to me. I enjoy the tactile sensation and having to think a little longer before I, I write each word and choose each word. So if you find that it, it helps you, then do it and you, like I said, you will probably be surprised by what comes out because at least in my experience, you'll I'll start writing and it'll be the obvious things of the problem that I'm facing or the turmoil that I'm in. I'll, I'll be writing about all the obvious and then I will be really surprised by what comes after I write out the obvious. Because once you kind of get those thoughts out, then you start digging deeper and getting more to the heart of whatever the issue is. And some beautiful writing can come from that. And you can take that then and put it in a different context and there you go, you have you have a grain to start building on that can sometimes be a spark of inspiration for a piece. Or, like I was saying earlier, you might write out, have a journal where you just put these um, these therapeutic things that you're, that you're working on and they, they don't have to be, give yourself permission to write without writing something to be published. Give yourself something to write without writing something that anyone will ever look at. And you might find that you might be in a different headspace later, go back and look at it and be like, dang, I know I was in a lot of pain or whatever when I wrote that, but I can look at it with fresh eyes now. I, it's not as present to me. I'm safe now. And that's some good writing. I need to use that. <laughs> and plus, I think it's important as an exercise. We need to be able to write about our characters joys and agonies and to most authentically do that you need to know how are you going to write about your own how are you going to describe your own experiences what vocabulary are you even going to use what does it actually feel like what does heartbreak feel like not just they're sad and they cried a thousand tears and they didn't get out of bed for five days what does it feel like is it how does it physically manifest in your body how does it affect affect the way that you're looking at the world around you? Are the colors gone? Do you feel an ache in a certain body part? Do you no longer view your relationship with your family the same way? You know, look, really put some of this stuff down. At the very least, then you can go back and look at it for characters. <laughs> so, I suppose what I'm saying is writing's kind of like sex. All consensual sex is good sex, right? So all writing is good writing. And it might not have a commercial value, just like you might not be producing a child or whatever, but it is still going to be furthering you along in your journey and helping you in that moment. 
and maybe it's something that you're greatly enjoying, maybe it's something that feels kind of painstaking and it's difficult for you to do, but ultimately will be rewarding. So don't take that part and apply it to the sex metaphor, don't. That, that, those are two separate metaphors. So <laughs> just to clarify. So I feel like this was a little bit more meandering than my usual episodes. Um, but hopefully that's okay because this is a safe space and I want to, <laughs> I want you guys to just know that there is a lot of heart and a lot of soul, there's a lot of grief, there's a lot of joy behind every story that you'll tell and every word that you'll put on paper and that it's okay to experience that and it's okay to use the tools that you're learning as a storyteller and as a writer to help you in any way that it can in your personal life. And like I said, you never know. One day you might turn around and be like, I love that sentence. Putting that as the opening line of my next book. So nothing is for naught. Okay? I suppose that's my ultimate message here. So I am going to sign off with... Oh no. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I'm going to sign off with something that I um, got for free in the mail. My Tennessee Visitor's Guide. My brother was watching a, a, a fishing show and they adver I think it was in Tennessee, and they advertised, if you want your own free visitor's guide, go to, I don't know, like Tennessee.com or something like that. So I went there and I uh, claimed my own guide, so I haven't looked at it yet, but I'm excited to see what Tennessee has to offer. Already liking what I'm seeing. Ooh, yeah, I'm really liking that. Look at here. Some mountain men. That looks pretty cool. I'm a history nerd. That kind of stuff excites me. All right, so. From me in my Tennessee Visitor Guide with MLK on the cover, please remember that if you subscribe, you will be notified each time I upload a video, and that if you're enjoying this vlog, you can support it for $1 a month. If you're enjoying my creativity and my writing and my ridiculousness, sorry, there wasn't much of that in this episode. I'm sure we'll return to the normal nanity next time. Um, you can support me on Patreon for um, 5 or $10 a month, depending on what rewards you want. And I look forward to seeing you next time. I hope that you guys enjoy my upcoming book. And I will be talking to you soon.